The Stoa is a digital campfire where we cohere in dialogue about what matters most at the knife's edge of what's happening now. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Stoa, the second session in our day-long symposium. Let us maybe make the metacrisis our superordinate goal symposium. Uh, and Benita Roy is here. Uh, she needs no introduction at the STOA, um, but I am in symposium mode, so I will read uh, a bio that I found on her LinkedIn uh, profile. Uh, I'm an author, teacher, insight guide, and international trainer focusing on building greater capacities for human sense making. That's cool, but if I were to write it, it would be uh, more jazzy because uh, we know Benita brings the jazz. Uh, and I asked, like, Benita, would you like to do something on today's symposium? And she came up with the title, The Metacrisis, Living in the Bardo, Waiting to be Born Again. And I don't really know how today's session is going to work. Uh, and I'm always a little bit nervous when I hand the, the stoic keys to Benita, but that's a good thing. Um, but it is going to be interactive. So we're going to go into breakout rooms. And so if you don't, if you're in like listening mode, then maybe it's time to slowly sneak out. Um, but we will be... Uh, 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 having an interactive session. And roughly an hour, we may stay longer. Um, so that being said, I will take in Bonita now. Take, you're it. Great, thanks Peter. Thanks everyone for being here. Um, this session is kind of emerging from a lot of the conversation that we all have been having about the STOA, about the lockdown, is the STOA going to end? Is the lockdown going to end? I had a conversation with Peter and we talked about how the STOA has kind of the flavor, the energy of lockdown, right? I mean, it started with the lockdown. Um, it gave us a place to be, um, but I started to think about, and this question of whether the STOA should exist. And I started to think about this, you know, excess there's you, you you go to a stoa session and then yeah it's satisfactory but there's always this excess and we heard it this morning it's like all this framework around the meta crisis but then what do you do and then you realize that's solutionism so you're not going to do that and then there's conversations about trying to know something but then there's in you we're in the not knowing and then if you actually could speed up all the stoa sessions it started to, I started to realize it's like spinning in the bardo. And um, so I went back to a book that I've had for a long time and it's Trungpa's uh, Transcending Madness. And he talks about the bardo. He says the bardo, we tend to think about it as the time between uh, incarnations, right? Between when we're we die and then we're going to reincarnate and we have this opportunity to uh, be in the bardo realm. But he says that it's really a uh, model or a framework for what he calls everyday bardo, that we're constantly not really able to commit to being alive in this body at this time in the destiny that we have. And that we're always kind, like the bardo is not really a horrible place to be. The bardo is like the internet. You just surf and if you don't like this flavor, then you move over there, you get a different flavor. And, and you're constantly kind of, there's a lot of distractions in the bardo. And sometimes we wanna go and surf the internet and see horrible things, you know, the, the, the bears, the koala bears burning alive in Australia. And that's like hell. And then sometimes we wanna go see some porn and that's, you know, and then sometimes we we're on the internet and we're meditating. And if we really notice this behavior, it's actually exactly how Trungpa describes the bardo aspect of um, experience. And so I started to really uh, want to critically examine the internet and the stoa. And also, um, for example, yesterday, I was on a stoic session and there's a new place, the in, in, inter-intellect. And, and I started getting really like uh, Sartre's nausea, du trop. There's just too, like what is all these formulations of all this, 
what is going on here? Like, and, and it, is it, is it seductive in a bad way? Is it, is it the kind of seduction we need now? Is it a handmaid into something else? And so from this perspective, it's this notion of living in the bardo, okay? And then we're waiting, waiting to be born again. And, and I'm hoping that in this session, we'll do some breakout groups that we can answer for ourselves. What would it be like to be born, to really commit to being born now? in a limited body, in a limited time, in a limited, limited knowledge, in the limited perspective you have, in the place that you live, what would it take to, yeah, exit the bardo? And, you know, one of the things Kenneth Falk talks about, uh, among other people, he talks about when the Buddha was alive, it was just a given that you would be reincarnated. And, um, and so there's a definition of nirvana, which comes from the root word nibbana, which means extermination. And so there's an interpretation of what the Buddha was pointing to is to get out of the psychic, the karmic wheel, you really get exterminated. Like that's what nirvana is, that you're not reborn again, but it doesn't mean you're in a, like a place of heaven because it's what we will see is that the heaven, the gods in the heavenly realm are also in a samsaric wheel because of the law of impermanence. And so the one of the first bardo realms is the realm of heaven where we're all gods and we've reached nirvana, but there's a subtle, there's a subtle karmic trace because of the law of impermanence. You can't stay there. And that's where um, Trungpa's, uh, that's where we're going to start with Trungpa's bardo realms. I need to share my screen. We're gonna look at the six bardos. We'll discuss them brief, briefly and the relationship to each other. And then we're gonna go out in a breakout room. In your breakout room, you're gonna help each other kind of try to identify which part of the bardo realm you spend most of your time, which, which is your, your habit? Where, where do you tend to cycle? And then when we come back, we're gonna say, okay, the people who tended to cycle in the heaven realm, keep your videos on, and then we'll have a discussion amongst the, heaven, the heavenly, people in the heavens, heavenly realm. And then we'll have a discussion of the people who like to hang out with the hungry ghosts and the people who like to be in the animal realm. And so we'll have these mini panels of all of us based upon where you find yourself. Everybody's gonna find some of themselves everywhere, but where do you find yourself? What is your pattern in the bottle, Bardo? What's the seductive cycle for you? And then we'll try to see, well, what holds you back? What, what, what prevents you from being born? We wanna to try to be, we're waiting to be born, whatever that, that means to you. Okay, so um, the notion of the bardo as this kind of spinning, mesmerizing, confusing, dynamic space of being in between Trungpa uses the metaphor of a river. If you're in the middle of the river, you're not on this shore and you're not on that shore. And you, you're, kind of, you're kind of just in this turbulence. There's a sense of being in the middle or in betweenness. There's also a sense of choice, but you always get snookered, right? You think, you think your, your family is there and in reality, they're, they're not, it's just an illusion. Or you, you move over here and you think you're on solid ground. Um, I really liked the graphics in the Chapel Perilous because at first it looks like the characters are on solid ground and then you zoom out and you see they're really on just these islands. And the Bardo is like that. You start to realize you're in the Bardo and then you look over there, ah, 
And that's appealing to you. You go over there and you find maybe your mimetic tribe or you find the stoa and you think, now you think you're on solid ground, but slowly there's a porosity happening and the, the solidness, the solidity of, solidity of it move, starts to fall apart and then you start to move. So it's a dynamic uh, kind of relationship between um, the six realms and your tendency to move in one way or another. And I put the word the spectacle in the middle because if you've been reading uh, Peter's uh, blog is this question of like, how do we use the internet without creating the spectacle, without succumbing to the spectacle? And I'm saying that I wanna use that word as having this Bardo kind of uh, dynamic. So we'll start in the heavenly realm. Um, where, uh, where we find people who have reached heaven, the gods, um, that they have, uh, you know, maybe this is part of the spectacle. We've met them at the Stoa. They've done all the jhanas. They're enlightened. They're self-professed our hearts. Here they are. They're representing the, he the, he the heavenly realms. Um, but because of the law of impermanence, there's a sense of anxiety because you can't stay there. It's a noble truth, even for the gods. You can't stay in the heavenly realm. So you start to, the solidity of being enlightened starts to give you anxiety. You feel like you're on a slippery slope, right? And you, you feel this when you hear these conversations amongst the enlightened people, like what is enlightenment and is this for enlightenment? You know, all these distinct, there's a slippery slope happening. This is the feeling of the non-solidity of the heavenly realm. You know, you get snookered. And so you turn to like spiritual materialism, judging who's more enlightened than the other. Uh, you might have more self-development, more wisdom gems. This is the whole kind of reaction in the realm of the heavens, the heavenly gods. So, and you start to get protectionism in, in a sense that you would like to protect this beautiful place of, of uh, bliss, existential bliss, as, as Trungpa calls it. And so these are, all, these are the, this is the bardo of, the heaven, heaven and the heavenly gods. Now from here, um, some people move down the right-hand side and some people move down the left-hand side. So you wanna find your pattern. Um, and so in this first thing, we're gonna move down the right-hand side and you see the right-hand side is disembodied. It stays in the astral realm or the etheric realms, right? In the left-hand side, it becomes more physical and more earthly. So you might already know um, where you tend, when you panic in your heavenly realm, where you tend to go. So that's one pattern. So we'll start with staying in the ethereal realm. Um, once you realize that um, um, you have this anxiety, the anxiety starts to build up a certain energy, you start to lose hold and you, of this, of this godlike part of the bardo and you start to move. And so this creates the jealous gods. It's a step down from this blissful state that you had a little peak of. And now you start to get some um, concern over your reputation, you start to rely on the intellect the, and what we would call the meta. This is the people who go meta. Okay, I'm falling, I'm slipping. Let me go meta on my experience because you still want to get up back into heaven. There's a sense of paranoia, a sense of that you're starting to fall. Maybe there is no bottom. How, how far from the gods am I going to get? You're worried about your reputation. There's a status sense in this. There's a sense of survival in winning. So this is a step down. The anxiety turns into paranoia and you start to, um, now think of the people in the stoa that are in the jealous God realm, the paranoia, using the intellect, the meta, meta intellect, using their status 
to claim the space about survival, how we survive and how we win. This is a whole group of uh, this whole class or category of, of uh, presentations at the STOA and how you can slide into that Bardo realm. As that progresses, I mean, you might, in general, you don't move up. You have to get to hell before you can be reborn, get back to the heavenly realm. But as you, as that energy builds up and at first it's a solid place, you're using your intellect, you're using the force of your reputation, you're, you know, you're chicken little. This is how the earth is falling, the sky is falling, this is how we're gonna survive, this is how we're gonna win. Uh, just a lot of game B type of uh, uh, action logics, but because you're kind of exhausting that, then you end up falling into the realm of the hungry ghosts. Ghosts, and this is a sense of lack. You've lost everything. Uh, you you um, your pride is hurt, but you're trying to preserve your pride. You're grasping at straws to have a sense of self-worth and you become very consuming. You consume workshops, you consume books, you consume stuff on the internet. You start to consume. This is, this is you feel lack. So you have to consume, you have to read more, you have to do more, you have to spend more time at your work. You have to write more journals. You have to uh, do more. This is the this is the hungry ghost. There's never enough. I don't have enough likes. I don't have enough, you know, this is, this is the third movement down the right hand part of the Bardo realm. So that's one arc. <clears throat> the other arc is a different type of uh, Bardo experience. And it's the move from the heaven. We start the heaven again. We have a little glimpse of blissfulness, maybe just before we wake up in the morning. Then life, then life happens, right? And we don't choose life. We have this anxiety, this, we feel that there's a slippery slope. But in this case, we're going down the left hand toward the physical. So we start to have anxiety, we're going down the slippery slope. And so then we start to strive to have better judgment, discrimination, we become human, which means we become moral. And we look for an ethical code. And we judge ourselves and people by ethical codes, that we have a certain kind of feeling that we could perfect the human experience. So this notion of human perfection, um, it's intellectualization, not necessarily meta, but more like striving for knowledge and analysis and frameworks and models and um, mostly ethical and moral models. And so if we could just strive to obey the Ten Commandments, then we will live heaven on earth. So we've given up on heaven because that's simply slow. And so now we're like, okay, fine. We don't want to be meditators. Fuck the gurus. I just want to be a person. Like, I just want to be a good person. And now you're in this Bardo realm. It seems, feels very solid. I just want to be a good person. Maybe we can all get together and change climate. Maybe we could be cosmopolitan socialists. It's all very much wanting and striving to perfect the human system. And this feels very solid. But as you're going around and you're trying to do this, something strange happens and you realize there's too much space between people. There's too much empty space. Nothing is really solid. There's too many mimetic tribes. There's too many languages. There's too many perspectives. Nobody can agree. And so then you want to get deeper than the human. Maybe we're just animals. Maybe we should just try to get down to the level of being street smart and stubborn and using our instincts. And we don't have to be so intellectual. Like why, you know, why are people being so intellectual? Why don't we just you know, take care of our babies and take care of our farms and be really stubborn and be the salt of the earth and, and just 
be instinctual and this and 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 acquiesce to human ignorance just like we're just being animals here just playing it out taking care of your own doing that really well being with the earth being with death this is just the way it is and we get into this we try to get underneath the human experience and we get to the animal the animal realm and it feels very solid maybe we 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 fornicate and we just like practice all these like like you know tantric things and we party a lot and and we're on the farm and we have communes and 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 we're going to get back to nature and everything is sensual and everything is is radically sensual and radically uh, polymorphically sexual this is the move into the animal realm but it turns out it's not solid it's not sustainable it's impermanent and it's porous and of course then we get to hell because the energy of the animal realm brings us to aggression. And we feel there's, we're overcrowded. We're, there's too many relationships. There's, there's, there's too much gore, too many, too many relationships. There's too many babies, too many animals. There's too much of climate. There's too much going on. And we try to get ahead of it, the sense of one upmanship. Can we get ahead of it? Um, and the sense of opposition. This is a very ugly, we can't get away, we're crowded, we can't get out of all the relationships and all the dynamics that we've created um, as we've gotten into hell. And the sense of claustrophobia and overcrowdedness is, uh, um, so we get aggressive. We might get so aggressive that we work ourselves back up to spiritual materialism. And then it can start over again. So just take a moment to look at this and um, maybe just, you could write down the names of that because we're gonna go into a breakout group. And what you wanna do is help each other figure out what your tendencies are or what you feel where where do you where what part of the bardo do you spend most time in or what is your bardo rhythm um and you know what have you seen at the stoa that reflects like how like at the stoa on the internet can you feel yourself can you feel how yeah how these rhythms the bardo rhythms are seductive for a little bit but not very long, like that's the thing, they're tenacious in getting you and then they're very fragile and porous and there's something always un left unsatisfying. And of course, the fact that they leave you unsatisfied makes you very vulnerable to being seduced to another part of the bardo. So just make sure you have your terms right when you go in here, when you go into the conversation. Would you like me to put them into groups now, Benita? Yeah, so the intellect of the jealous gods is more like meta. You're, you're trying to, it's, it's like the intellect, it's like metacognition, it's like the mind in Buddhism, whereas in the human realm, it's intellectualization, like um, being a professor or an ac academic. Oh, what does being born mean? That's the question. What does being born mean for you? That's what we're trying to get to. When we come back, we're going to ask that question, but within these groups that have similar patterns. And what if uh, you kind of find yourself all across that, you know, that rhythm? Yes, everybody's going to have some. 
If you find yourself every place, see if you have one side or the other, what you tend to. But if you go through them all, just really explain how like, yeah, and then this happened to me and then I was bounced over there. And if you're everywhere, then you're a Bardo knot. Like an astronaut, you're a, ba a Bardo knot. That's awesome. And how many people would you like in the each room? And for how long? Uh, I don't know, a Bardo bummer. Uh, three or, f you know, f I would say three or four and for uh, 10 to, let's say 12 minutes or something. Cool. Three people for 12 minutes. Cool. So if you don't want to be put on in the breakout room, uh, slip out now. So, um, all right, we're back, Benita. Okay, so the people who naturally found themselves on the right hand side from heaven to the jealous gods to the from the gods to the jealous god to, to the jealous gods to the hungry ghosts to hell people who found themselves mostly there keep your video on and everyone take their video off Wow, it looks like it's just about half and half. Let me see. Yeah, cool. Okay, so um, the let's have some comments. Let's share some comments about um, your experience and how you recognized yourself in this uh, part. Um, okay, Peter, we're, there's a request to have this not be recorded. Yeah, I'm cool with that. If everyone else, yeah, is cool. yeah, okay. and then we can have maybe a Q and A right at the end with a with. The cool. Uh, um, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I can. How long uh, the time wise? You think, Benita? Just so I can, we can. I don't know. Um, just another ten minutes or so. I mean, it, it's a great. You know, we could go on forever, but. <clears throat> cool, cool. Just to get the frame. So yeah, we'll we'll end in about 10, 10 minutes. Uh, feel free just to raise your hand or just jump off mute to ask a question. We'll do it informal, and I'll have one Benita just to start yeah. us with. Uh, how's this relate to the meta crisis? Because <laughs> we were in a meta meta crisis symposium. So uh, yeah. So um, so I think the meta crisis. Uh, you know the the notion of it being a meta crisis. It means like you're boxed in everywhere, right? So. Uh, you know, as Jonathan said this morning, you know, you could be like an emergency, but then when you go to put out the emergency, then it's something else. And when you go to do uh, that crisis, then you realize you have to stand back and look at it as meta crisis. But then when you're out there in the meta crisis, maybe that's, you know, I don't want to map it too strongly onto the Bardo, but then you realize, well, you're not doing enough at home. And so, you know, this notion, the notion of the Bardo is that you're always searching for solid ground, um, but where, you know, it's like looking for love in all the wrong places, um, but what you're moving on toward is not, is never really, it's still in the Bardo realm. It's still illusory. It's still, um, uh, what, you know, he talks about it being porous and there's a lot of space there, you know, the Bardo realm is a lot of space and we're searching for solidity. And the idea here is that you get snookered. So when you're in one realm, you think, ah, I'm gonna commit this to this. It could be tiny little, you know, you get on a stoa session and someone's doing a really good presentation and you're like, I get it. You know, I'll see like someone speak and I'm like, yeah, I should be more like that. That's what I'm going to do, you know, and I'm just going to study more. Or oh, Adam's got his hand up. I'm going to call on him, but I use him as an example. I see Adam. I'm like, you know, he just works so hard and he's so good at what he does. And he's really grounded and he, he, he boxes with cement uh, columns. And I get like pulled, like, I want to be like that. Like, like, and then I think, okay, I should work out more and maybe, you know, and like, and then another one, and then another one. And so part of the meta crisis is we keep looking for, yeah, bodies to inhabit, right? And it pulls us out of being born um, 
And I, and I know, Julie, we want to talk about that at the end. So uh, Adam, did you want to say something? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I had a question for you, but I also just had a thought about uh, Peter's question about what, it, what does this have to do with the meta crisis? And um, I'm reminded that the, the, the etymology of the word crisis, one of the roots is, is turning, a turning point. Um, something's about to change or, or turn around. And there's a, there's a Greek and Christian term, uh, epistrophe, which means turning around, turning away from um, and it's a maneuver. It's a it's a move that you can make, a philosophical kind of contemplative move. And um, the way people describe it is very much this moment that you were talking about, Bonita, where you realize, oh, you're you're turned into something, and it's kind of consumed you, or you've you've kind of made it the totality of everything. This is the answer. This is the truth. And then something happens, and you remember, oh, this is a story. This is. This is a kind of a pattern that I decided to feed into, but now I need to turn away from it. So the, the crisis in meta crisis and the, the turning away in something like epistrophe is something like, like breaking out of that, like almost like a trance state, right? Mm -hmm. um, you get, you get seduced by it. Or, uh, you know, one of the things we were talking about in, in our group is how um, the world actually kind of places demands on you that, push you into one of these bardo spaces and you kind of have to operate in that mode whether or not that's what you're choosing to do or what you want to be a part of uh it's you're you're in conditions and they put you they condition you right um but my question for you was was more like um i wonder if we can get you to zoom in on uh, the the realization part that you started your talk by saying there's a moment where you realize, oh, I did it again. I'm, I, I looked for this solid ground, but it isn't solid. Um, and ah, now I remember. And now it gives you a little bit of agency. It gives you a little bit of, you know, freedom maybe. Um, but I'm wondering like, what can you tell us more about that feeling? Because I think pursuing that feeling and maybe understanding how to cultivate it or how to bring it back when you need it um, is like one of these great abilities that you'll want to have as you kind of move through the chart, you know, so you, you don't get so stuck. Yeah, so this is very tricky because I don't want to bias one of the Bardo patterns to answer your question. So I'm going to, um, do something orthogonal to the question, and then maybe you can help me make a point out of it. <clears throat> there are two basic two, we have two eyes. I forget who talked about the two-eyed two frog, but anyways, there's two eyes. It, it can be mapped onto McGilchrist's right and left brain, but one is, what are you looking for? That's more of the Bardo flavor. There's a sense of, I'm being seduced. Uh, I see. I see the oasis because I'm looking for it, and the looking for is part of like I'm looking for because I'm already out of here, right? This is this is one. The other one is what am I looking at? Feel the difference? Like I'm just standing right there. What am I looking at? And so. Part of being born is you're in a body that has got a perspective and you're like, well, what am I looking at? And that's the whole entire then activity. It's not doesn't mean I need to understand it or, or I'm just looking. It's, it's, it's not, you know, that we use that, that per, organ of perception too much, but it's, it's completely allocentric. Like, what am I looking at? And in that participation, I move and I act. And I have no idea. So I do have agency. I do have choice. I do have movement and I do have action. But I don't try then to say, oh, what kind of island am I on? Because as soon as I do that, I'm either in the hungry ghost realm, there's an island, or I'm in a human realm or I'm in another realm. 
And so the best way I can answer is those two different modes. What am I looking for? That puts you in the Bardo realm. What am I looking at is not a Bardo experience. Hmm. And in fact, it is the way to see, oh, what am I looking at? Oh, that's an illusion in the Bardo. So I'm not in the Bardo if I see that. Mm -hmm. So I know this is not a very crisp way to answer your question, but that's for me been a powerful kind of, it's more than a metaphor, uh, but, but it's very tricky not to be, it's very tricky how to answer that and not get into a Bardo realm. And so the question of being born again is inhabiting the, per the perception that your perspective, that's a horrible word now, but it's inhabiting a body that has a perspective mm -hmm. that looks and listens and, and touches and feels and acts in the world. Um, because that's who you are and it's an on, ongoing becoming. And then um, to really get there, you have to get into, uh, for example, uh, the Dzogchen or the uh, view of certainty, that there's, there's a deep certainty in something. You, you come from this, it's not solidity, and that's what you're looking for in the Bardo, but you're just who you are and you have this allocentric or this other mode of being. So I'm not trying to cop out of an answer here. This is a very hard you know, thing to, to talk about in a, in a few sentences, but I don't know, maybe you had some comment on there and Chris has a comment. Yeah, no, I think that is helpful. Uh, on the one hand, I have the sense of um, there's, there's, a, there's a, a pull to doing. What do we do once we, once we look at the, the Bardos, once we see this, what do we do? And I have a kind of intuition that says, well, there's nothing to do. That's, that's just what's, what's happening. And then there's another part of me that's like, well, there's suffering and there's probably more and less suffering doing this in one way versus another way. Um, so there's that kind of discriminating aspect. Um, but so like in my experience going through the exercise, what I noticed was a, a very predictable pattern that I go from you know, human to animal to heaven to human to animal to heaven. And you kind of look at that and you say, what am I looking at? I'm looking at my pattern, you know, but then there's a question of just, do I just let that pattern sit there? Or is there something to do about it, you know? And so that that's just kind of where I, I landed and is, is realizing the pattern important in the scheme of things or am I just going through it because that's, I don't know, that's my karma, that's my conditioning, that's that's what is, that's what it is to be me at this point in time kind of thing. Yeah, um, you know, another way, oh, they're just they're an animal. Uh, there's another kind of mantra involved in all this, and that is um, this mantra of, and everything seen perfectly, all things seen perfectly are loved. And that's a solid place, right? When you see things perfectly, it, automatically they're loved. And then you reach solidity. That's, you're no longer in the bardo. So it's this notion of what is perfect seeing, what is seeing, uh, um, but that's the flavor of um, exiting the bardo. And, and of course it's impermanent. So the bardo is not a bad thing. It's, 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 it's a pattern and you could see through it like just like a hallucination or a dream. It's kind of cool, look, you know, like, wow, I see ships in the clouds. That's like awesome. Um, yeah. Benita, um, so we reached to kind of the 15 minute mark. Uh, and when your dogs usually bark, that means they, it's time for it to go <laughs> consistently. Um, so any, any closing thoughts uh, for us? Uh, okay, so the closing thought is the other side of, the other way to get out of the bardo is instead of being born is to die. 
And on the last session of the maybe the last day of the store, um, we, I'm going to do a 10 minute death uh, ritual, which will be the other way you get uh, the, released from the Bardo. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so this session was a secret setup for the maybe the end of the stove party. There's going to be, a, it's like a two to three hour party, a uh, series of exercise. A lot of facilitators are coming in and Benita's is going to be the last exercise of that session. Uh, so you can RSVP at the, the stove.ca 6 p.m. Eastern time on March 21st. Uh, so before I make the, the next announcement of the next event, Benita, thank you so much for coming today. That was an awesome session. Let's give everyone a round of applause, silent round of applause for Benita. Um, always love having her here. And uh, so we have uh, the next one's at 2 p.m. Eastern time, about 40 minutes um, on this book, X Risk, how humanity, how humanity Discovered Its Own Extinction. So it's like the history of existential risks. Uh, you can check that out, RSVP. It's a separate link than this one, so you have to go to stoa.ca, RSVP for it. So that being said, Benita, everyone, thank you for coming to the Stoa today. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, Benita. Thanks, Bonnie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.